GPUs inside recent notebooks have become efficient and powerful enough to replace a desktop. But that comes with a cost. For example, in the past, the most powerful mobile GPU being used inside notebooks ended up being cut down derivatives of a desktop class graphics card. Um, even the GTX 980M, which was considered to be powerful for its time, was based on a cut down version of the GTX 970. And that resulted in performance primarily meant for notebooks with a 1080p display, uh, plus the frame rates were a lot lower than its desktop counterparts. That's not the case today because you can equip a notebook with a desktop class GPU that has specifications that are equal to or even better than its desktop sibling. But how much of a performance increase are you gaining over a previous generation mobile GPU? You'll have the answer to that question by the end of this video. Light up your build with Hue Plus by NZXT. It fits into two and a half inch drive slots, comes with four individually controlled RGB strips with plenty of connection cables for best routing, and is wonderfully controlled through the CAM software. Get 10% off at nzxt.com, link in the description. We'll be doing all of our testing on this new notebook from Eurocom. It's called the Tornado F5, and under the hood, we've configured it with an i7 6700K, 32 gigs of RAM, a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and a 1080p 60 hertz G-Sync display. The primary focus of this video will be comparing the GTX 1070 and the GTX 980M GPU in a true apples to apples scenario using the exact same notebook for both. This is possible due to the Tornado's MXM 3.0 interface and relatively easy upgradability. Spec-wise, the 1070 has 30% more CUDA cores, much higher clock frequencies, more memory and faster bandwidth compared to the 980M. Even when compared to the desktop card, this version of the GTX 1070 could be considered faster since it has more cores unlocked and runs at very similar clock speeds. You heard that right, the notebook version is actually faster than the add-in card. You can probably tell the 1070 is going to destroy the 980M too, so what's the use of this video? It's actually to show how far we've come in a single generation for notebook gaming performance. I'll be continuing these head-to-head -head comparisons as more mobile GPUs are available, and hopefully that will include AMD at some point too, because they're very late with releasing their Polaris 10 architecture into the notebook space. So let's roll with the synthetic benchmarks. Starting with 3D Mark Firestrike, the Tornado packed with the 1070 performed nearly two times faster than the 980M. You will notice the ASUS G752VOC kept up really well with the Tornado and at some point surpasses the Eurocom since it boasts an overclocked CPU alongside almost the same specifications. Moving on to some gaming, we ran our first tests at 1080p cranked at the highest settings and the GTX 1070 on the Tornado ruled throughout most of the titles. The 980M is trying hard to keep up, but the specs on it were limiting. It really is amazing to see how far ahead the GTX 1070 really is in real world scenarios. And something else to take into account is that in some scenarios, even with detailed settings cranked, the GTX 1070 is still CPU limited at 1080p. 1440p tests were performed on an external monitor and the same story applies here. Like I said, the 980M is not meant for this kind of resolution because it was targeted for notebooks with a 1080p display but the Tornado with the 1070 changes the story. You can confidently hook this monster to an external 1440p monitor and enjoy the graphics. In many cases, the 1070 actually widens its lead here since that slight CPU bottleneck I talked about at 1080p has been eliminated. In DX12, things really changed in a big way. It becomes obvious the GTX 980M's core architecture wasn't all that well prepared for Microsoft's new API, and these results back that up. If you're buying a notebook with the hope of playing DX12 games in the future, make sure you spend the money for a Pascal-based system. Let's talk about battery life, and as you can see, the GTX 1070 gives about the same battery life as the GTX 980M. On the surface, that might not be as impressive, but remember, this new card grants double the amount of performance. This is all performance per watt, and in that regards, Pascal rules the day. The Tornado F5 from Eurocom packs some serious punch under the hood. The 15-inch form factor is not that bad for portability, plus if you're wondering about upgradability, it has you covered. As you can see, there's an extra M.2 slot for storage expansion, memory is accessible, and most importantly, the GPU is upgradable too, provided upcoming architectures support the same form factor. The Graham Spectrum Keyboard by Tesoro comes with a new mechanical agile switch with low profile keycaps with super fast response and shorter actuation distance plus all the customization included with RGB lighting and macros for a premium user. And so my concluding thoughts about the GTX 1070 and the GTX 980M is that this is just the beginning. 
You see, we're in a time frame where notebooks are loaded with dueling specs that are neck to neck to an equivalent desktop PC. The only downside to these machines are the massive size, uh, proper cooling, and the hefty price tag. But I'm sure that will be solved sometime in the future. But until then, Pascal has proved its performance uh, and power efficiency compared to Maxwell. And if you're thinking about upgrading, do it. As always, let us know your thoughts about this comparison. And if you have any suggestions for future comparison videos, leave a comment down below and we'll make sure to check them out. I'm Ebro with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.